let's now focus on how we are going to find the k documents that are closest to the query okay that is how are we going to choose the k largest query document scores okay the the k documents which are closest to the query after doing this computation so that's something we want to do very efficiently and of course you know one trivial way to think about it is you just sort this entire uh you know uh, list of uh, scores and then choose the top k that's actually a pretty inefficient way we'll look at a more efficient way to choose the top k scores and we are also going to try to optimize the computation this term at a time scoring and the document at a time scoring that i just mentioned we can actually do it faster and that's something we're going to focus on okay how do you calculate these scores uh, between the query and the different documents more efficiently and how do you choose the k largest values among them more efficiently okay now can we do this without computing all the n cosines where n is the number of documents in the corpus and the answer is yes just based on what i told you that we are not worried about documents that are not in any of these three postings lists okay the total number of documents is n but most of them will not be in these three postings lists assuming that you know these are relatively rare terms in which case we are already dealing with less than n documents okay we we are not computing the score between the query and every single document in the corpus we are just focused on documents that are in at least one of these three postings lists but we want to do even better than that we want to be more even more efficient than this can we do this without computing the score between the query and all of these documents even within these three postings this that's something we'll look at okay. so in computing the score between a query and a document if we go back to that uh, um, vector space representation of the query and the document we have the query and the document in this v dimensional space and assuming that you know all the vectors are normalized you can think of them as points on this v dimensional sphere or or v dimensional surface okay in the first quadrant or the first octant or whatever you know whatever you call it v and okay all every single value every single component of every vector is non negative now so there are these n plus 1 points located on this v dimensional surface okay the query and those n documents and we want to compute the um the the k documents that are closest to the query on that v dimensional surface okay now if all the vectors have the same length then the angle between the vectors actually represents even the distance between the query and the do the, the the actual distance between the query and the document along this sphere along this surface right so if you think about the distance between a query and a document along this v dimensional surface that distance will be that angle multiplied by the radius okay just like in a two dimensional surface you have you know if this angle is theta then uh, you know this length is if and if r is the radius this length is r times theta right so whether we think of measuring the angle between the two points or we think of measuring the distance between the two points along this surface it doesn't matter if all the vectors have the same length of 1 okay so r is equal to 1 for all the vectors so choosing the k nearest neighbor problem um so actually this is a technical term k nearest neighbors okay choosing the k nearest neighbors to the query is geometrically this is pretty hard we don't know how to do this efficiently for uh very high dimensional spaces okay v which is the size of the vocabulary is you know in tens of millions probably so um uh, your number of dimensions are in tens of millions and it's very hard to measure um 
you know these geometric distances between uh, vectors like this so even here as you just saw we only have to take focus on these three components and then do these three multiplications right we are not taking this 10 million long uh, vector and then multiplying it with 10 million long vector because we know that most of the entries are going to be zero right the, the entries here are the rest of the entries here are zero and so whatever be the entries the corresponding entries in the document vector it doesn't matter zero multiplied by that is going to be uh, going to remain zero so we are focused only on these three so in one sense we are just focusing on three dimensions if you just focus on three dimensions it becomes easier otherwise you know it can become uh, harder so for short queries okay for example this query was just three terms long we know how to do this well and we're going to see uh, we've already seen actually how standard indexes can support this okay we just saw that here so i already told you that we are looking at a special case where the queries are unweighted that is for every term that occurs in the query the corresponding component in the query vector is just one okay and obviously we are also assuming that every query term occurs only once in the query okay you, you don't have the same word appearing twice within the query itself although that, that is theoretically possible in which case you know we will probably make this two okay just to um, store the term frequency score at least in the query but for simplicity let's assume that each query term occurs only once so the entries are only one for those terms and this is something i already mentioned we don't need to normalize the query vector okay that means we can save some calculations normalizing the uh, query vector because that's going to remain the same and what really matters to us is the relative ranking of these documents okay so as i said this pseudo code can be slightly simplified by just making this into a one so with this simplification that i just mentioned w of t comma q will be one okay so this pseudo code becomes slightly simpler now having done this calculation how do we choose the k largest cosines can we uh, do this without completely sorting the list of documents that are returned okay so let's say the number of documents that have a non zero cosine with the query is j okay obviously j is going to be less than n but j could still be pretty large so how do you choose the best k out of j the top k out of j any uh, ideas if you've done a course on data structures think about what data structure would be good for this which which does not require us to sort this uh, uh, these j values i mean a trivial way to do this is to sort these j values and then pick the k highest but we don't want to spend that j log j time in sorting so if you want to do better than that Uh, hello. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, could we do something like we would do for selecting the maximum of a number? You just go through the loop once, uh, and any time you find a number which is greater than that, you'd set it to the max. Like initializing it with the first element, uh, going through the loop. If we ever find an element which is greater than that max, we would set max to that number. Uh, in the same way, we could have a smaller array like a uh, with k with the k first elements. and mm -hmm. going through the loop once if we ever find an element which is uh, bigger than uh, k uh, k minus 1 of them at least 
you can mm. uh, add it to the array and remove the last one or something like that okay okay that's uh, that's an improvement over this uh, there's actually a data structure that is that would prove to be even more uh, simpler uh, this is a data structure called a heap have you done heaps in your data structures course yes yes yeah you've yes, done sir. a heap right okay so if you remember from that course uh, you can turn off the microphone so think of think of storing these j scores into a heap okay why are we choosing a heap because a heap allows you to select the maximum element in order one time right because the so this is something called uh, there are actually two kinds of heaps there's something called a max heap which has the property that the value in every node is greater than the value of its children and then there's something called a min heap where the value of every node is less than the value of its two children okay i don't want to go into the definition of a heap you know it's a um, it's 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 kind of a uh, uh, it has this kind of a shape it's a it's a binary tree where all levels are filled except the up to the penultimate level and the very in the very last level the nodes are filled in from left to right and each node has this particular properties so let's focus on max heaps here since we want to select the k maximum values for the score and so what we'll do is we'll build a heap using those j scores and i'm not going to get into that here but if you recall your data structures course you can build a heap of j elements in linear time okay if you if you don't remember how you can go back and read up your book i think we also have a video on heaps i, I gave a, a two hour lecture on uh, heaps and priority queues at some other university so uh, those videos should be on youtube in case uh, you want to revise um, heaps so uh, i discussed the various heap operations in that uh, lecture so uh, in particular the build heap build heap building a heap can be done in linear time and once you've built a heap then extracting the maximum element from it finding out which element what is the value of the maximum element will take order one time or constant amount of time but if i were to delete the maximum element then to 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 maintain the heap property will take you order of log j time okay suppose there are j elements in the heap then inserting a new element into the heap takes order log j time deleting the top element of the heap will also take log j time so this is something i'm not going to discuss because i'm assuming you've done this in your data structures course and you can revise it if uh, you don't remember how so if i want to extract the k largest element i can successively perform k delete operations on the heap and i will get the k largest elements okay in decreasing order now because each operation takes order log j time each individual delete operation takes order log j time after building this heap in order j time we can take order of k log j steps in extracting the k largest elements okay so the total time will be order of j plus k log j okay and assuming k is much less than j uh, this is pretty much linear time in j okay and if the value of j is for example a million and the value of k is 100 then the amount of time that 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 this will take if you actually uh, use a heap will be about 10% of the cost that you would have incurred if you had done the full sorting okay so instead of sorting the uh, uh the, the whole list and then picking the top k you build a heap of those j elements and then extract the top k that will be more efficient 